Good morning ladies and gentlemen, this is part 3 of the uh, Sentinels model series. Today we're going to discuss Pew Research and their uh, data regarding illegal immigration. It's a little more mild in comparison to the other ones and you'll find that at, uh, later down the video. So the first one is just compensating for the illegal immigrant population. We'll find that Texas and California each lose one seat and these move to Michigan and Ohio. Now if we move over to uh, the same pattern over here. We'll find Minnesota's 8th, North Carolina's 14th, Colorado's 8th, Michigan's 14th, <coughs> California's 51st, and then we have Ohio's, Idaho's 3rd, New York's 27th, Texas 38th, uh, Pennsylvania's 18th, and West Virginia's 5th. So basically the same thing as previous patterns. Just a, a simple one and done for this. So, with the post enumeration numbers, we find that it's a little more radical in the changes. So we see once again, Colorado, Colorado, Minnesota, and Rhode Island losing their seats to Tennessee, oh uh, yeah, so Tennessee, uh, Idaho, and Florida. Now we have. California losing two seats, they go to Michigan and Ohio. Texas retains their seat. And if we move down the line, once again to my to the number that defines this entire series, 385, we have on 381 we have Idaho's third, then Oregon's sixth, Ohio's sixteenth. Michigan's 14th and New York's 26th. Then it's below the line, it's California's 51st, Louisiana 7th, Texas 39th, Pennsylvania's 18th, and Virginia's 12th district. So that's a little more surprising in the moves that changed. So we are already seeing significant changes in a way if we just do this. Um, what happens here is once again we'll find Republican states underestimated, Democrat states overestimated. There's a pattern emerging here. Very important. It's, it's something that we have gained as part of our evolutionary traits. Pattern recognition. If something happens multiple times in exactly the same direction, you've got yourself a pattern. And with this pattern, you also need to en ensure that it doesn't include your own bias. In this case, I've done this calculation multiple times over. I am 99.9% .9 accurate. There's a pattern here, it's consistent, and it's in favor of one political party, the Democrats every single time. So what happens here? It is the US Census Bureau that makes these calculations. They calculate people on the basis of their residency status and not because of their citizenship status. This was actively blocked by Democrat lawyers during the final months of the Trump years. Well, the first term of Trump, because he's probably going to win in 24. probably gonna win let's be honest so we have this and it's very important to know who is the individual that works on this when it comes to organizing the census and we find that every single one of these individuals are Democrat partisans we're talking about DC here for God's sake it's a, it's a district that votes 95% Democrat I, I can pull this up, I think. So we can just go here and then. Uh, we'll Let's go with uh, the congressional represent uh, congressional elections in District of Columbia. Right. So we have District of Columbia. At the end election, uh, end election, they refuse to write down the data as of now. But we can also see it here. 
primary votes. 3,000 for the Republicans, 100,000 for the Democrats. Come on, bro. So we go here. 85. <laughs> there isn't even a Republican in the, in the race here. 85% Democrat vote. 87%. 88%. 84%. 89%. Come on, guys. This this is exactly what happens here. So it is organized by an organization that is exclusively located in D.C., where it is 90-plus percent Democrat. That's the issue. So how about we go to the presidential election in D.C.? 90%. I'm just going to check. Has there ever been a time where the Republicans won DC? And of course it's not. Not even Reagan could crack it. Not even Nixon. Come on. This is the kind of thing. The Republican has never won DC. That's a fact. So you, you have here a district exclusively controlled by one party who is in charge of the administration of the entire thing. Of course, their party is severely advantaged in this kind of administrative thing. Of course, they're going to rig the, the census in their favor, overcounting Democrat states, undercounting Republican states. We already proved that to you with the part one, where I basically already showed you that of the 10 states the 10 states and territories that were overcounted only one of them was republican utah and when it comes to the 12 states that were undercounted only one of them was democrat illinois and it didn't even change a thing for illinois so it is 100 percent clear that this is done to systematically overestimate democrat population, representation, and taxpayer subsidies. It is systematic, and there isn't a single politician that cares. That's the problem. Because it's because America is a one-party nation. The warmongers. Sure, they carry two torches. Two flags, Democrat, Republican, but they're the same thing. Ever noticed why nothing changed between Bush and Obama? Or between Clinton and Bush? Or Bush and Clinton? Ever wondered why every single time a Republican president is receiving significant pushback? It's because they weren't part of of that one party system. Hell, Jimmy Carter, he was the same. He wasn't a warmonger, just like Trump, and that's why they were kicked out of the White House. Jimmy Carter did not declare a single war during his presidency. He was a monumental failure based on his econom economic policies, but he didn't declare a war. Donald Trump, complete opposite. Excellent financial policies, excellent civic policies, no new wars, actively trying to end the war in Afghanistan, actively trying to end the war in Yemen, Syria, Libya, Iraq, and, what, and, and of course America's longest war, Korea. He was a peacekeeper. And he will be rewarded for that in the history books. 
as long as the history books are written by fair-minded people. And that's where the problem comes in. Do these kind of people still exist? After all, history is written by the victor. You need to recognize that. And you need to remember that. And if you lose, you will not be treated fairly in line in history. It's the same thing why nobody knows about the uh, concentration camps in Katyn, which is uh, currently Belarus, Soviet annexed territory where hundreds of thousands of Polish soldiers and officers were slaughtered by the Soviets as a revenge for their independence war of 1920. Soviets massacred them all, but nobody reads about it. Because after all, the Soviets were part of the Allies in the Second World War, and they won the war. So they were capable of throwing all their war crimes underneath the rug, completely ignored. There's a reason why war, Soviet war crimes aren't discussed. Because they're the victor of this conflict. And it's the same thing that Soviet war crimes in Vietnam are not being t talked about because the Soviets won in the Vietnam proxy war. And it's the same reason why we know about Soviet atrocities in Afghanistan, because Afghanistan won. There's a reason why we know about uh, Arabian war crimes in Yemen, because now we have a more open source of information, the internet, which is why internet it must be censored according to these uniparty warmongers, because if there's freedom of information, you'll push right through the fog of war. And that happens here. There's a reason why nobody believes there is no longer a possibility of unity in a nation. Because we don't use the same sources anymore. And I want to pull this up real quick. Yeah, piss off. Uh, let's, let's go with my own Twitter handle. Here it is. I'm relatively balanced. 50% right-wing news, 17% moderate or centrist, 30% left-wing. It is balanced in their view. So for me, I consume media on all stage. And then we have, uh, let's go with someone, check another profile. So let's go with uh, the loser, Charlie Crest. There you go. 50% left wing, basically non existent in his right wing policy. So there you go. Left-wing sources, we go with Val Demings, Miami, Orlando, so it is hard left, and all these things. Watch the Post New York Times, it's all left-wing sources. So th there's a problem here. There is no connection in a nation anymore if people don't have the same news sources. So if you have one unified source, national public broadcasting, everyone gets the same information. That creates unity. Problem is, gatekeeping in such an organization also puts anything inconvenient for their owners out of the public view. And as a result, you do have a unified view, but anything that falls outside of the permitted worldview is blocked. Which means that you can't find the other side of a war, for an example. Which means that war crimes on one side are highlighted, whilst the crimes on the other side are completely hidden. And you'll see that currently 
today in the conflict in Ukraine. Russian war crimes highlighted, Ukrainian war crimes completely ignored. Never mention the fact that the armies that currently took Kherson from U the Ukrainian armies, they literally had Nazi insignias on their uniform. Come on. Every single time where war crimes are found in Ukraine, Azov Battalion shows up and exposes that. Isn't that convenient? That every single time the neo-Nazi battalion of Azov walks into a town, they find, they find war crimes. Isn't that convenient? Again, pattern recognition. Very important. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is funny because every single time I have just a little bit of content, like, like this, this thing could be five minutes, but it technically was, but then I start ranting for like 10 minutes and we're currently above 15 minutes, so I must be some kind of legendary ranter because this, there's nothing more to discuss. Um, yeah, so thank you kindly for watching. I think this is very therapeutic for me, so I can have a little something to say. I can also spew out my rants into the ether. Sure, I may not be as fired up or as aggressive like Razorfist or some other genius content creators. Vocabulary eloquence contained within their character. Linguistic geniuses. I may not be such a character, but I can be. Just requires a little more energy. Energy that currently there isn't much to be found of. Yeah. I got nothing more to discuss for this video, and before I start ranting about completely irrelevant subjects, I'm gonna cut an end to this. Thank you kindly for watching. This has been part three of the pure research thing, uh, pure research data for the census model. Uh, thank you kindly for watching once again from the bottom of my heart. Greatly appreciate you stepping by and um, gracing me with your presence, I should say that. Uh, like the video if you did, subscribe if you want more content like this, share it if you think other people should see this kind of stuff. Um, there isn't really much else to discuss, thank you kindly. And I'll see you next time. Part 4 is going to be Statistas Data. And I should have this also ready and filmed on the same day. Thank you kindly. Enjoy your week. Cheers.